Yo, what is up, my Nakama? So my name is Daniel, and I'm a current second year medical student. And because I just finished first year of medical school, and it's still fresh in my mind, I wanted to share with all of you five tips on how to survive your first year of medical school. Let's go. All right, so starting off with tip number one, and that is to find a study strategy that works for you. Now, obviously, when you're gonna be entering medical school, you're gonna be somewhat nervous and you might feel overwhelmed because you feel like you might have to approach medical school with a completely brand new study strategy that you're not used to at all. But I'd recommend first trying out what you used in undergrad in the first month of medical school, because to be honest, you got into medical school for a reason and whatever study strategies you were doing got you into medical school in the first place and you managed to pass your exams well enough anyways. So I'd recommend trying the study strategies that you used in undergrad during the first couple months of medical school and see if they work for you. Now obviously medical school is a beast of itself and there's probably way more material than you've ever covered in any of your previous courses in undergrad. So you might have to adapt your study strategy, but in my opinion, that's kind of what the whole first couple months of medical school is all about. It's all about learning new study strategies and how to approach this vast amount of material and adapting your old study strategies to the new medical school curriculum and just finding out what works for you. So yeah, that's pretty much my first tip is to find the best study strategies that are individualized and work for yourself. Okay, so tip number two is along the same lines of choosing a new study strategy. And it's about choosing and optimizing the vast amounts of resources that are available to you as a medical student. So our school, for example, offers us a ton of free subscriptions to certain resources like Pathoma, Sketchy, First Aid, USMLE RX, and then there's other ones that you can pay for like Boards and Beyond, Amboss, Firecracker. The list just goes on and on. And just reading this list out loud, it kind of gets me overwhelmed too because there's so many different resources and it's kind of hard to learn all about them and to actually use all of them. So here's what I'd recommend. During the first month or the first couple months of medical school, try out a few of the resources that seem appealing to you. And if you pass your in-house exams and do as well as you thought you would do, then stick with those resources. And don't try and pile on and add more and more resources. Basically just choose a few dedicated resources and stick through those during your preclinical years. Um, so for example, I mainly just use like Boards and Beyond and Anki. Those are like my two strongholds, my saviors of medical school. And those are the two that I basically do almost every single day. Um, at least I do Anki every single day and Boards and Beyond I do when I have um, lectures as I watch them concurrently. But basically just choose a couple resources and stick to those resources. Um, and you'll find that this way you're not overloaded with so many different resources because honestly, most of them are kind of redundant and they say the same information over and over again. So rather than listening or reading the same thing over and over again, just choose two resources at least that cover a certain subject and stick to those. So for example, let's say that you wanted to try out Anki because you had no idea what Anki is, but you hear a bunch of medical students and a bunch of YouTubers, including myself, always talk about it. So what I recommend is like, if you have an exam after your first three weeks in medical school, try out Anki for those three weeks, be consistent with it and actually do it right. And if you score well in your exam, then continue using Anki because it was effective and it works for you. However, if you completely bomb the exam, then there's two reasons why. Either you didn't study hard enough or you didn't use Anki properly, or you actually did use Anki properly, but it just doesn't work for you. And that's completely fine. Anki is not for everyone. I do highly recommend Anki because I believe in spaced repetition because there's a lot of studies that show that spaced repetition is a very effective way of studying and retaining information in the long term. However, Anki is not for everyone and certainly many of my classmates don't even use Anki. Um, they just study traditionally like through textbooks and through the lecture slides, which is perfectly fine because if that works for you, then that is what you should be consistent with. Just remember that at the end of the day that what works for someone else may not necessarily work for you. So that's why you should spend the first couple of months as an experimental phase, trying out new study strategies, testing out new resources, and ultimately choosing ones that work for you. <laughs> okay, so tip number three, I think is super important, and it's to not forget who you are. 
And what I mean by this is that when you applied to medical school, you probably had like a bunch of hobbies and interests that you talked about and that you're really passionate about. And what I find happens to some people is that they get so overwhelmed with the medical school curriculum that they just focus on studying all day and they kind of lose sight of all the hobbies and previous passions that brought them into medical school in the first place. So I'd highly recommend just devoting some time each week or even each day to these hobbies that you love. So like whether it's photography or fitness and exercise or dance or artwork, just try and make some time throughout the day to actually do those activities. Because you know, you're always gonna have new things to learn every day. And even if you're caught up with one day, there's always material to learn in the future. But you know, your hobbies and stuff, it kind of gets you through the day and it's just a fun thing to do and it's a nice way to relax if you enjoy those hobbies that you do. Um, and I would definitely make time, you know, hang out with friends, try out new recipes, learn to cook. Basically just do things that aren't always medically related. Because personally, I don't really want medicine to be like the singular thing that defines me. Although I am very passionate about this career path, I obviously have other interests that I enjoy doing, like making YouTube videos and being creative in my videography and stuff. So yeah, just, you know, don't lose sight of who you are and try not to let your medical school studies consume you. Okay, so tip number four is also something super important and it's about time management and balancing your play and your work. So you're gonna have a lot of work in medical school and I'm not even gonna lie about it. Like during the first few months of medical school, I was very overwhelmed with the amount of material that was being presented to us on a day-to-day -day basis. And sometimes I would wake up at 8 a.m. and stop studying at midnight. So just a full day of just nonstop studying. And that was partly due to my own anxiety and nervousness of going into medical school. And it was also because I didn't really have an optimal study strategy and I was just using way too many resources at once. But as I kind of went along medical school and I adapted to the curriculum and I got used to the material that was being covered, I learned how to optimize my study strategies and I learned how to spend less time studying and more time actually like learning the material at a quicker pace. And that left me time for other things that I think are super important like exercise and nutrition and cooking your own meals uh, and hanging out with friends. and just having a good sort of physical and mental health balance because medical school, it is very hard. And you know, for a lot of people, it is going to affect their mental health in some way, um, especially, you know, with the situation that we're in now, seeing, you know, what a lot of physicians are dealing with. It can be hard for some medical students, I'm not gonna lie, but that's why I recommend just having a good time management and, you know, making time for those activities that I mentioned that were your hobbies that you came in with um, because, you know, you're always gonna have your studies you're always gonna have exams, but at the end of the day, you know, medicine isn't really the only thing that defines us. We are humans as well. <laughs> okay, fifth and final tip is just to have fun. So I know that when you think of medical school, you're probably not thinking of having too much fun, but honestly, you know, the friends that you meet, the experiences that you share and the material that you learn, it's all just so interesting. And it's really fun kind of going to a new state, going to a new school, meeting a group of 150 students, all somewhat like-minded and passionate about medicine. You're kind of all in it together and it is truly a fun experience. And I mean, you're gonna learn a shit ton. <laughs> like I didn't even realize how much I would learn in my first year of medical school. And basically now, like, I feel like I can answer so many questions about the human body. And to some extent, even when like my family's is asking me questions like about, what is this rash? Or is this water safe to drink? Oh no, that water could have giardia. You could have diarrhea. <laughs> like I couldn't say that before I started medical school because I had no idea what giardia was and I didn't know the different levels of diarrhea that you can have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you enjoy medicine and if you're really passionate about it, then you are gonna have fun in medical school. And the long hours of studying, it's all gonna be worth it at the end of the day, in my opinion. So, you know, just don't forget to have fun and relax. It's not all that serious. Um, although medicine I, is a serious profession, you know, we're all out here just trying to do our best and trying to have a good time. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, congrats to the incoming MD class of 2024. I can't wait to see you in our school. And, you know, feel free to talk to me, uh, all you incoming MD 2024s, if you're watching this video. <laughs> I know some of you are. Um, you know, and as always, Datebayo.